Hello, this is Dr. Maureen O'Neill and in this particular video I'm going to talk about InCapture, which is the tool of going over to any of your social media sites or your database sites or even your websites and capturing it, um, the actual article or the document with the InCapture snapshot tool. Um, so let's have a look at what it means to InCapture. And, um, and I'll share my screen to do that. And I'll show you how I step through the ability to be able to have NCAPTCHA on my browser, which I predominantly use in Chrome, but I'll show you how to do it and bring it up in IE. But I tend to use it in Chrome more readily. So let's go over. And as you can see, I'll share my screen. And down here, you will see that I have NCAPTCHA on. And if you come up to the top bar, you'll see that there's a little icon, a little eye blue con. And this indicates whether you've actually got it loaded on on your browser. Now, often if you haven't seen this little round circle uh, with a couple of dots and the orange top to it, and I'll show you what it's seen, it, it actually indicates this just move this over it will say capture for nvivo and the most important thing is see how i have my nvivo project open have your nvivo project open at the time when you start going and searching for articles now i found this a fantastic uh, ability to be able to let me go cyber searching and keep on going without having to stop export it to endnote then come back I'm actually downloading it as I go and then when I go to open up the project or have the project open like I have here, I simply can import it in all in one. I can either select what I want to come in or I can bring them all in and then go and actually decipher what I want to keep or not. So it's a very good um, tool to be able to keep you going with your research and not having to come out of it and stop all the time. But um, so I've got it on my browser. The best way to get it on your browser is simply see these three dots going down on the, the, the far right hand side. Just click down and go to more tools. And in more tools, you'll see that a, another drop down comes up. You want to click extensions and then go through and see what extensions you have on your computer. Now I had an in capture and I enabled it. So anything that I want on my extensions, I just enable and it comes up. You can get more extensions by clicking here and the download for and capture is there or you can just go straight to the NVivo site into the help site here and you can actually, this is actually in the, the program of the help button of your own um, project. So if you open up your project here and you press down on your question mark, that will take you and open you up to a whole section where you can ask questions. And I asked about importing mCapture over on the search bar and it came up to me and told me about mCapture, what it does. So it goes to a document that you may be looking at um, on the web or in databases. It You click your mCapture extension and when you open up your project, it comes up. Now, if you haven't got the extension, you can click for NCAPTCHA help and it will actually um, load for you how to download the NCAPTCHA uh, to your Chrome bar or if you want it in IE, you simply do the same thing. You just go over to IE, you click down and you ask, uh, drop down to this open with Internet Explorer and once you open with the Internet Explorer, you'll actually see in the tools bar on the right hand side that you can actually go down and do in the two bars here, you do managed add-ons. And in the managed add-ons, I haven't actually added it on at the moment because I rarely use IE, but you can actually see if you've got the permission to actually add on and you click down to end capture and add it on. If you haven't, you just download, as I've said, you go here to the help button and you download, go to end capture help within the program of your NVivo and there'll be a download capacity to either download it to either browser. So keeping that in mind. Now, what does NCAPTCHA do for us? Well, 
it's quite a good tool in the sense that if you wanted to go to um, websites, and I usually go to Scopus, and if I wanted to come into Scopus after I've logged in, I can actually capture anything that I've gone over to the database. Now, I, I know that if I click on um, this particular article here, which I did in Scopus, I can actually use all my export abilities. As you know, you can export it to your uh, EndNote if you like. You can print it out, you can email, but you can even save it as a PDF. And once you save it as a PDF, you can capture it by using your end capture tool. But the other way that I normally do is just capture the abstracts as I go through to see if that's exactly what I need to to keep my literature review going and it captures all the details of the document. So I simply click down and I capture it. Now I can either capture it as a web page or an article. I describe it, scope this document, I could put in the actual names of the authors and then I capture. Now I've already captured a number of these so and I'll show you how I capture. I just simply click to see what I've already captured and Scopus documents already been completed and downloaded so I'm not going to download it again. So just to, to let you know that it is possible to check what you're downloading as you go through. If I wanted to actually go and um, go to a website, I would do the same procedure. I've got my NCAPTCHA tool, I click on my NCAPTCHA tool now. Instead of having a website here, I would capture it as an article, as a PDF, and see how it's changed it. That was what the, um, I can change it to a, an article. I'm oh, sorry, I'll change it back. Here's the original web page. It'll just take a bit to revert. But I don't want all the videos. I want it to come into my project perhaps as an article. That's what it would look so it leaves out the video YouTube. But it certainly can capture it totally as a web page and you can capture that YouTube live within the web page as well. So depending what you want in your particular project is how you actually capture it. Just remember that if you capture it um, as an PDF, it's probably a better way of being able to tag certain and code certain sections of it as well. So just depending how you actually want to um, capture it and how it comes into your project. And that's a very important issue. Um, now, the reason that I find this very helpful is I do, I go Far, far and wide. You can also open up um, Facebook or social media sites and capture, use your end capture tool on those sites as well. For example, if you opened up an open page on Facebook and we get, you know, had comments coming in, you could certainly and capture them as an article or even as a web page as well. But this is how. I utilize it, I can go over to the various websites or I find it very handy to um, go to the databases and start a um, complete comprehensive look. And you can see that I've also captured this one as well, show capture progress page, which is really important. So you can see that I've captured, you know, these articles at the Australian Sports Commission, the Winning Edge, and I've already done that previously, so I don't need to recapture any of those. So all I need to do now is once I'm finished and I've seen that I've captured um, the actual um, pages that I need to, to capture, I simply go back into my um, project and I'll just open up, I've already opened up my project because I normally have my uh, MVVO going at the same time. Um, and all I simply do is capture it. Now you can capture it straight away in the internal sections and then sort it from there. Or I normally have a, um, a literature or a folder that I've created. For example, I just go to internals, click new, create a new folder, name it, perhaps the one that I've done here, literature for teaching sample that I'm using on high performance athletes that we teach this, this data from our teaching sample. And I actually have already got an empty folder. Now, there are two ways of bringing in the MCAPTCHA. You can simply go up to data and bring it in from other sources. Or if I'm normally within the empty box, I just right click import, 
import from NCAPTCHA. Now, don't forget, NCAPTCHA is a cloud facility. So it's storing everything that you're capturing on a cloud that is associated and are linked to your downloads. So remember that. So now I get a prompt saying, okay, where do you want me to go and get the downloads that you just saw that I've already captured on my capture um, progress? You must browse and you must go to downloads and then go okay. And as you can see, everything that I just captured, so all captured, not previously imported, which is great, you can actually get all your captures back up but I don't want to um, bring anything else up that I've previously captured because I don't want to duplicate it. Um, now, if you do duplicate it, it's fine. You can simply, it will come up as a second version and you can delete it. But I just want to browse to my downloads. So remember that is an important aspect of bringing it into your project. And I simply want to now, because it's actually, I haven't, as you can see in the chart, I haven't previously imported. Now this is really good because as you can see, it not only gives me the details, if I'm very refined with how I'm actually describing what I'm bringing in, normally the Scopus documents, I put orphan names too. So it'll bring it in with the orphan names attached. It's got the, the HTTPS site that I captured it from and perhaps if there's any DOI associated with it, but the whole lot comes in. And the reason that it's good to mCapture is it goes straight into your source classification table. So you don't have to add it to your already formulated source classification list and I'll show you that. But all I simply do now is import. It'll phase it in. It may take, you can see the progress bar down here. Just let it have a little bit of time to come in. So it's automatically doing the work for me. And it's not, if you don't bring in too many at a time, it may not take too long to actually come in. It depends if you brought them in as uh, PDFs, as you can see, I put them all in as PDFs. And there you go, there they are sitting up there. Let me open up the the Scopus document and show you. So it shows me exactly what I actually went to. Um, I can still hyperlink on anything that was hyperlinked within the Scopus data. I can view the references. I can go down and I asked it, my search tank, it tells me exactly what I was searching for, combined sport and study and in high performance. So that's what my search parameters were. And it actually gives me everything, the original, the DIO, and it, and it actually gives related references that I could actually go to as well. And again, they're all hyperlinked already. So I don't have to do anything. I just simply can come back into my Envivo project, open up what I've captured with the one article, and then go and scroll down through all the hyperlinked ones, all the references that came in, and actually keep going and actually capture more. So that's a way that I actually find that I get into a cycle and I can utilize and capture to my best ability there. Now, I've actually brought them into a specific folder, but if I thought that they belong to another little literature folder that I've already created, I would just simply click and drag them across. Mm -hmm. So I just simply click and drag them. Um, but I believe that these should all sit in this folder, so I leave it there. So if you go to your classifications, you'll see that I have a reference. Now we've talked about this. Um, I'll open up my classification list. And my classification list is actually creating um, a ongoing list of all the authors and um, subsequent sites. Um, anything that I've gone to to research and it actually is listing down the title as you can see here whether it was a web page whether it was a generic um, article that I brought in etc etc and as you can see if it had a secondary title if it had associated data if I go over here what volume number if it was an article um, volume number and issue the pages as you can see the effects of the intervention um, coming in uh, and so it automatically inputs it into my classification sheet. So I haven't got to go and actually add that. So that's the advantage of using MCAT in the sense that it will automatically add to the sheet. Um, importantly, you can see the ones that I've just brought in. So Australia's Winning Edge, the AIS Tally, the AIS 
page all automatically just added when I just imported that as an MCATcher. So that was a really great benefit for me because I'm not having to do that duplicated work and, and go and add them in. So just remember that um, it's really important to make sure that what you bring in, so when you open up, if I open up import again, it actually will come import the data. It, now you can see I've already, it's ticked that I've already previously imported. I've already imported those into my data set. So I've got an indication that when I go and search again, I don't need to import them again, which is really positive because I'm not duplicating and I don't have to actually, um, you know, delete any of the duplications and it's it's quite easy if I duplicated and brought those all back in again I simply get a, a, a second a second lock coming up with two I just simply delete that so then I can go right ahead and as I said um, start uh, researching through what I've already bought in so it makes it a, a very handy tool for researching and and compiling that literature review so I hope that actually has given you a little bit of a, a look at NCAPTCHA and a look at the, the versatile ways that NCAPTCHA can help you research as well, but also the important steps that you need to do to bring in NCAPTCHA into your NVivo project. I get lots of questions certainly about, but I've, I can't seem to, once I open up a project or come back to the Envivo project, I can't seem to bring in the end captures. Well, the trick is they'll all be sitting on your downloads because they're downloaded to a big cloud space and then you can bring them in from there. So I hope that's helped you. Um, good luck and um, have a good journey with researching and using your end capture tool. Thank you.